Yesterday, Atlantis, the far continent beyond the pillars of Hercules. Today, Pico Island, one of the nine Portuguese Azores lost in the ocean wastes between Europe and America. On this remote Atlantic way station live a people who struggle endlessly for their bare necessities. With determined efforts, these gentlefolk build with stone and cultivate mountainsides. Their land, once a fiery volcano, has been conquered. Yet they remain dependent on the demands of the sea that surrounds them. Though isolated and burdened, the wealth and turmoil of distant lands have had little appeal to the generations of Pico. of life for these island people are combined with renewed hope. A better catch of fish, a ship with mail and cargo, another whale to be hunted. His name is João, the harpooner who must work at numerous jobs and patiently wait for the time of the hunt. But for him, as for some of his neighbors, tomorrow, or even today, may take on a dramatic change of tempo. Like João, the other islanders claim a rich heritage. Arabs, Flemings, French, Spanish, and of course the Portuguese have contributed their legacies to a way of life that has known little change. These ancestors were daring and intrepid mariners who bequeathed a rare knowledge of the sea the natural gateway to an outer world. Born with oars in their hands, these insular people live with the sea. They love it and respect it, but are always ready to contend with its many moods. But the most celebrated of seamen are those that venture into still greater depths to stalk and kill the awesome sperm whale. Hunting this monster is also part of that struggle for survival. Simple tools, an open forge, and a remarkable sense of form are part of the whalesmith's craft. The harpoons and lances are identical to those of a century ago when Yankee whalermen from Nantucket and New Bedford, the greatest in their day, introduced whaling techniques to the Azores. On this forgotten, windswept island, these early American methods still survive. In the hunt for the whale, the Pico men have never used guns or bombs. end with the smith. Every piece of equipment, except the lines, is made on the island. In an uncertain sea, the only security the whalermen have is in their slender yet rugged whaleboat. Practically unchanged in its remarkable design, they lavish upon it constant care and attention. Skilled hands must know every yard of sail, plank of wood, 
fathom of line. During the hunt, the only bond between man and whale is the harpoon line. After the harpoon toggles into an outraged beast, this connecting line can carry death with every foot of its length. Should it ever kink or foul, it can tear off a man's leg, flaking and stowing it inch by inch only helps diminish the danger. Homage to Our Lady of Lourdes is highlighted by the Festa dos Baileiros, the festival of the whalermen, a moment in the year when these bold men of the sea ask God's blessing and protection in their hunt for the whale. cliffside just beyond the village, the whale lookout commands a panorama of the Atlantic far below. The Vigia keeps watch for the whales dawn to dusk nearly all the days of the year. critical since the whales may move out of the island area. of strength, motor launchers tow out the boats. Later, if the hunt goes well, they will tow home the prize.
Dolphins are tiny cousins of the whale and very unlike their larger relative, are curious about the launch. With harpoons at the ready, these boats may have to travel as much as 20 miles. A harpoon does not kill a whale. Toggled under the blubber, it fastens the boat to the animal. Later, hauling in on the dangerous harpoon line, the crew draws the boat closer to the whale, enabling Jean to jab the razor-sharp lance into the lung. Throughout the hunt, the launches keep track of the whale by radio contact with the Vigia. Balea! Balea! Blows! Blows! The tow is disengaged and an ancient drama begins again. crew goes on the murderous flukes, the dart of Joao's harpoon vitally important. A strike! The boat is fast to the whale and the harpoon line is played out. With incredible strength, the sea giant easily pulls the little boat for a Nantucket sleigh ride. The loggerhead snubs the flow of the running line. hand by hand, the crew haul in on the taken line. plunges into the ocean depths. The air in his lungs determines when he will surface, but where will he reappear, wonder the crew. Laws! Joao urges the crew to row faster, thus shortening the distance. Lancing is again repeated, but everything depends upon the judgment and accuracy of the thrusts. Despite the lancing, the lumbering monster remains potentially dangerous and at both ends. A sperm whale's crushing jaw is armed with 40 teeth. His flukes can slice a boat in half. He's beneath the boat, nearly spilling all into the sea chimney of fire, and the end is near. The coup de gras. 
pass, and his heart has burst. Na Palmeira, ou oh, vento norte brandinho, traz barcos de terceira, vento norte brandinho, oh meu bem, traz barcos de terceira. The corrida of the sea is now at an end. In the hours of the hunt, these men of Pico pit themselves against a giant of the sea in a strange and savage battle. They are a people of our century who are remnants of an age long ended. Their island home is still an outpost of civilization. They are its last whalers. <laughs> 